Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to go over and just kind of talk about and show you how to use a relatively new addition to Snowflake, which is Snowpipe Streaming. Um, so Snowpipe Streaming, if you're not aware, is a serverless data ingestion service that is basically aiming to, you know, load streaming data into Snowflake tables with very low latency and also without the need for an additional provider. So Snowflake's trying to capture some of that market of, you know, data streaming services. Um, and unlike traditional Snowpipe, which uses files, Snowpipe streaming actually allows you to write rows directly into Snowflake tables using the streaming API. Um, so it's really good for just saying, hey, I want to just you know, add additional table uh, incrementally as they're generated. Um, it's got really key benefits for accomplishing this. You know, you've got data available in seconds uh, versus you know, potentially minutes with standard Snowpipe. With standard Snowpipe. Uh, there's no file management. You can do direct row insertion without staging files, which is a huge pain in the ass and I hate doing. Um, it's also very cost effective. You only need to pay for the actual data that's ingested and there's no infrastructure managed because it's serverless. And it also has exactly one semantics. You have built in deduplication checks. And so to get started with that, with Snowpipe streaming, first thing you'll need to do is just create a role if it doesn't already exist, so Snowpipe streaming role. Um, and then grant these lists, you know, basically create a database um, and, you know, specific task relative to this role. So basically give, you know, what access to whatever database you want to use to your Snowpipe streaming role. Um, then once you're done with that, you'll then want to create a database in a schema specifically for streaming, or you can use an existing one up to you. Um, I'm also going to create a specific streaming warehouse for processing, but again, you can create your own streaming warehouse or use an existing streaming warehouse. There's no need to create anything specifically for Snowpipe streaming. Um, and the first kind of Snowpipe relevant thing here is the idea of a streaming channel. Um, and so channels are essentially logical partitions for streaming data where each channel represents an independent ingestion path. So in this case, this is streaming DB, raw data, events table. So viewing the available channels for a, a table. So this is going to tell me, hey, what are the channels available on this table? Um, and then you also have offset tokens. Um, so offset tokens, uh, if I want to create one here, essentially say, hey, I want to track the position in the stream. And this is what enables that exactly once processing, where every time a piece of data is ingested, you're going to have that last offset token updated. You're going to have last updated. Um, so this is going to automatically track and make sure hey, I don't actually need to have, uh, you know, I don't need to manually manage offsets or worry about data being uh, ingested twice. Channel offsets take care of that out of the box automatically. Then the next thing you want to do is create a target table. Um, and so here we're going to create a table called events stream, um, you know, just standard in, uh, data points, you know, really nothing special here. Um, and then saying cluster by to date the event timestamp. So it's going to be organized by the actual timestamp. Then what we can do is create a streaming client. Um, and here we're actually going to use a Python file, so stream.py. Uh, and then within here, we're going to set up a few different things. So first, import Snowflake Snowpark, uh, import the session, and this is going to essentially establish a connection to Snowflake. Also setting a version, um, importing JSON, for interacting with JSON data. You notice the connection parameters are also in JSON, date time, and UUID for unique identifiers. And here we're going to create, you know, connection parameters with everything I need to, you know, set up my streaming client. So this is, you know, imagine this is something that you have running in an external location, right? And then I'm going to build this session and then create an example function here, which is just going to say, hey, collect some data from this local event, right? So this is something that you'd have running next to whatever data you want to pull it, you know, pull into Snowflake and define this function that says, hey, collect data around this event and then insert into Snowflake using that streaming API. So here what we're doing is saving this date, you know, event as a data frame, uh, creating it within the context of the Snowflake session, and then writing it to this event stream table, but using the append mode. So this is only going to add it to the end of the table, not actually save it as an entirely new table, unless that event stream doesn't already exist, right? So when that event stream doesn't exist, it's, it's still going to create a new table, but otherwise it's going to just append it to that existing table. And then it's going to return the event ID so we can track when Snowflake, hey, this is the event that actually occurred. Uh, and each event has its own unique identifier. Then you're going to want to go back to your SQL file and create a streaming integration with this. So here we're going to create, you know, an ARN or basically have a integration with whatever endpoint you want to connect to. In this case, it's an AWS API gateway where you're going to create a role um, that allows 
Snowflake to interact with and get this data from your API gateway, and then also create a notification integration for real-time alerts so saying, hey, if anything goes wrong with the streaming integration, I want to receive an alert. Um, and that's really it. You create this connection to your, your you know, location you actually want to pull data from, and then you can have notifications that apply, hey, if this data, you know, if anything occurs here. But otherwise, every time an event is created, then that function is going to fire that then posts that data to your Snowflake uh, table, right? Now, you are restricted to needing a Python file to do these kind of operations. You could also do something like a bash command, right? So if I wanted to have another file, right? Um, so, you know, basically rest call dot um, So if I go in here, and then want to, let's say, stream data using a REST API. Here, what I would do is basically get, hey, here's the account, you know, Snowflake Computing, streaming my channel, um, and, you know, obviously the place you want, you know, the channel you define for your table. And then instead of a Python function, you can just pass an API request, right? So you're going to need to give it a token, and then you can say, hey, these are the events that I need. So if the, you know, endpoint or whatever event system doesn't have Python or you want to use APIs, you know, no reason not to, um, you can then use this to then say, hey, type this data as well, just send it to that API endpoint, and then that will take care of the rest. Um, and then there's also ways you can do it in the Java SDK, but I don't really use Java, so uh, you can look that up yourself. Um, and then, so let's say, you know, after we've gotten some basic, you know, you know how to ingest features or how to ingest data, there's also some cool things that this also allows you to do. Um, you can also create a view, something like that handles schema changes gracefully, right? Um, so here you can say, hey, replace view event stream as, you know, the basically as the new uh, columns are created from event stream so that if any new data points are created from that stream or, you know, now getting passed, then you have a view that will automatically update for those, uh, for those events. Additionally, you can also have a task that actually processes streaming data. So if you want to not only uh, stream data and ingest it, but then also process it in place, you can create a task called process stream. Now, in this case, I'm calling a process streaming events, which is saying, hey, every minute I want to aggregate all the events that were created, and then I want to perform some grouping action. I want to insert, um, and this is where you can have more complex actions here. So, you know, mathematical, taking mat, uh, truncating the date, so I just want the minute, uh, taking the event count, um, and really just doing more advanced processing, uh, you know, similarly to something like you do in Flink or Kafka streams. Um, to actually process the data using Snowflake as well, rather than needing to process it in some external location before actually ingesting it into Snowflake. Um, so you're not restricted to only ingesting raw data and not being able to transform it or you know, apply kind of map functions, um, but you can actually have those functions built into Snowflake as well. Also, another cool thing you can do is actually monitor your streaming costs. So as we all know, with Snowflake, it can get expensive. Um, and so here you can actually basically check, hey, I want to ingest, you know, all the amount, you know, the total amount of streaming I use and I analyze, hey, this is how much it costs me over a certain period of time too. Um, so it's not just a black box of, hey, you know, I'm spending this much no matter what. Um, so just really cool kind of, you know, additional functionality you can layer into streaming, Snowpipe streaming. And then I want to just round out this video with kind of a more complete setup, right? So what it would take to actually set up something for like IoT sensor data streaming. Um, and first you would, you know, again, set up your roles, set, make sure they're all granted to the proper entities, then create your tables with, you know, whatever fields they need to have, create a streaming view. And here you can actually on this streaming view uh, have data quality checks. So you don't want to visualize any data, obviously that isn't of a certain quality. And here you can say, hey, remove any null timestamps, remove or null values, less than current timestamp, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then here, you know, we have examples as well of an aggregation task, right? So instead of just taking the raw sensor data minute by minute or second by second, maybe I actually want to aggregate it on an hourly basis. And here I'm going to, you know, truncate and apply different functions to different fields on ingestion or every five minutes um, to make sure that, you know, data is of, you know, a certain form and factor, right? Um, and really allows you to have all the logic for transforming and manipulating and organizing your data contained within the same location rather than having to manage, you know, pay external logic and logic that actually been Snowflake. Um, and you also can do things like enabling anomaly detection. So get really complex SQL language that goes in and that tries to address any kind of anomaly. Um, and then obviously, you know, you're going to want to enable things like monitoring. So have a task that actually is going to aggregate sensor data. Um, and then you can use this kind of uh, function to test the pipeline, you know, insert into something and then triggering that pipeline as well. 
Um, but really just wanted to kind of go through those just as a quick guide to how to get started with Snow Pipe Streaming because I think it's a super useful tool if you don't already have Kafka or Flink experience. Obviously, if you have a Kafka or Flink environment, might as well just use that. But this is great when you don't need that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.